Hello everyone, um, it's Ashley here and uh, I'm filling in for uh, Nick and Joanna today. She's on a little vacation, which is great. Um, and so we're going to be doing noonday prayer here in about five minutes. Um, as you log on, say hi. Uh, feel free to put anything you'd like to pray for today in the comments and we will pray for them at the appropriate time in our noonday prayers. Uh, we are glad you are here. It is the third Monday in Lent. And uh, we're halfway there, guys. We're halfway to Easter. It's kind of hard to believe. So, welcome. As y'all log in for noonday prayers, feel free to say hi and to uh, add your own prayers uh, to the comment section. And we will add those um, at the appropriate time in noonday prayers today. Hi, Frida. Hi, Brian. Glad you guys are joining me. Um, Deacon Joanna is uh, out of town this week, so um, I'm covering noonday prayer for her today. So uh, I'm glad you guys are here to pray with me. Hi, Edith. Good to see you. We will add Greg and Kenneth to the prayer list. Hope you guys are getting a chance to enjoy the sunshine. This was a beautiful weekend, and today has been really nice. It's been a really nice morning on campus. Uh, the kids are outside riding bikes, and you know, it's just a lovely day. Brian, I will add Rhonda and Jacob and Christy to my list. We'll get started here in about three minutes. Um, New Day Prayer begins on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. Um, you can also find it at bcponline.org or um, any other way that you can uh, pull it up. If you have the app um, for your phone, EBC, ECP, <sighs> lots of acronyms, <laughs> lots of letters, um, you can pull it up that way as well. Or you can also just listen along and that's fine too. Our reading today will be from, um, from John chapter 7 um, for the third Monday in Lent. And our psalm will be Psalm 119. Now that we're we're halfway through Lent, uh, I hope y'all are doing well on your Lenten uh, practices, whatever those may be, um, and that uh, you're starting to, to see the light that is Easter coming towards us. Hey, Sally. Hey, Patricia. 
y'all have things that you would like for us to pray for um, today, you can add them in the comment section. And when it is the appropriate time, we will pray for those things. Um, and I invite you to also say hi as you uh, log on and, and join us. We'll get started here in about a minute. Uh, New Day Prayer begins on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. Hey, Henry, I will add Nancy to the list. It's so nice to see the sun again and to not wake up in the dark or, <laughs> you know, spring is, spring is on the way slowly. So. Well, it is uh, just now noon, so we'll begin with a little bit of silence and then we'll begin our prayers. Prayers for Noonday begin on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join me in reading Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and ever to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from uh, John chapter 7. About the middle of the festival of booths, Jesus went up to the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning when he has never been taught? Then Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory. But the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing false in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you looking for an opportunity to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus answered them, I performed one work, and all of you are astonished. Moses gave you circumcision. It is, of course, not from Moses, but from the patriarchs. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath in order that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I healed a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Now some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, Is it not this the man who they are trying to kill? And here he is, speaking openly. But they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Messiah? Yet we know where this man is from. But when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, You know me, and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true. And you do not know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. 
Then they tried to arrest him, but no one laid his hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. Yet many in the crowd believed in him and were saying, When the Messiah comes, will he do more signs than this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd and the mutterings such things about him. The chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you only a little while longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will search for me, but you will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that, he will, that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will search for me and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. Thanks be to God. It's a little bit of a long reading today, uh, but essentially this is the beginning of, of the culmination of uh, Jesus' ministry and the, uh, the acts that precede Easter and uh, Holy Week. And, and as we get, we're about halfway through Lent, um, and it has been an unusual Lent since we are uh, not all together um, regularly like normal. Uh, but as we get closer to Holy Week and I read this story, I think about what it must have been like for the the first followers of Jesus to be witnessing these things and to be um, hearing these things that Jesus is saying in the temple and um, during these festivals that were really part of the life of the Jewish people in this time. And um, as we get ready for our own festival, uh, being Holy Week, um, what what will we think when we hear people trying to arrest Jesus and and um, but not lay a hand on him and and question who he is and where he comes from and and what do we think of the idea that we can't go where Jesus follows and we will search for him and can't find him what does that mean um, in our life today and and every day that we get closer to Easter I think. Uh, it's so important for us to put ourselves in the story of Jesus's final days and Jesus's uh, ministry and um, think about what it felt like and what side of the crowd we would have been on. I, you know, I think we all want to believe we would have been like the disciples and, and, and helping Jesus, but we even see that, you know, Peter and, and the other disciples ran and hid also. So, you know, when push comes to shove, you know, who do we relate most to in this story of Holy Week and, and Jesus's ministry? I think that's an interesting thought to ponder as we are halfway through this story. So. I see a couple more prayers to add today. Um, so I'm going to get these added here before we continue. And try not to miss anything here. Continuing on page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Spirit of God, we ask your prayers today for Greg, Kenneth, Rhonda, 
Jacob, Christy, Nancy, Leah, Lars. We give thanks for our new members who are welcomed into uh, our church yesterday. And we give thanks for this beautiful weather and the beautiful day we have today. We ask your prayers over those beginning the construction of our youth building this week and uh, blessings on their work, um, that it can be done safely and swiftly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope you guys have a great day and that you will join us this evening for our Lenten liturgy at 6 p.m. on Mondays right here. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow for Noonday Prayer.